Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson, we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking abstract background animation using Adobe After Effects and TrapCode Form. So anyways, guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a new composition. I'm gonna run with a 1920 by 1080 pixel document, 30 FPS at a duration of about 15 seconds. Just press okay. Once you have that, the first thing that you need to do is you need to create a new solid and I'm just gonna call this form. And then obviously I need to search for the effect called Trap Code Form. Now, just a reminder that Trap Code Form is a plugin from Red Giant. So if you do not have it, please download it before continuing on with this tutorial. So anyways, once we've got that out of the way, the first thing that we need to do here is we need to open up the base form and we're just gonna change a few settings. We're gonna change the particles in X. I'm just gonna bring that up to about 500. I'm gonna change the particles in Y to about 47 and I'm gonna change the particles in Z to one. Once we have that, then what I need to do is I need to go to the X rotation and I'm just gonna change this to let's say 94. So now we've got it on an angle there and that's looking pretty good, but we're gonna keep adding to this. And now what we have to do is we have to change the size so that it fits on our screen. So I'm just gonna keep on going until it kind of fits like that and you're filling it all up with dots. So I think that looks pretty good. And now we can move on to the next section. So I'm gonna come down to the fractal field and I'm just gonna change a few things. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the effect size. I'm gonna bring that up to three. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the flow, flow X, Y, and Z. So flow X, I'm gonna to change to 90. Flow Y, I'm gonna to change to about 56. And flow Z, I'm gonna to change to 55. And I'm just gonna make sure that I click this uh, flow loop button over here. So once I have all of that, then what I need to do is I need to go and find my display settings. So this is now going to make it animate. So if I change that to 40, now I've got this kind of wavy thing happening here. And if I scrub through that, now I've got this cool wave happening there and that's looking pretty good, but we're also gonna make it look a little bit better. So if I open the particle settings and I change that size to one, now I've just kind of reduced how many of those dots that there, well, that's visible. So you can play around with some of these settings as well. So now also, if you wanna change the color, you can do that in here and I'll probably come back to that a little bit later. Cool, so now once we have that, then the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a new camera. So I'm just gonna right click and I'm just gonna add a 35 mil camera and I'm just gonna open up the camera options and I'm gonna change a few of these things. First thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the depth of field on and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the blur level to about 150% and you can play around with some of these settings as well. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to also increase the focus distance or actually decrease it to about 1300. And the final thing is I'm just gonna play around a little bit with the aperture. So I'm just gonna bump it up slightly just so the stuff at the front is a little bit blurry as well as the stuff at the back. So I'm probably going around 35, maybe something like that. Cool, so once you're happy with that, then the next thing that we can do is we can duplicate that. So I'm just gonna press Command D to duplicate that. So while I'm here, I'm just gonna rename this to dots and then I'm just gonna go back in and change a few settings. So the first settings that I'm gonna change is in the base form. I'm gonna go and change the X values to 50. I'm going to change the Y values to let's say 65 and I'm also gonna leave the particles in Z at one. Then what I need to do is I need to go down to the fractal settings, so the fractal field and I'm just gonna change a few things in here. I'm gonna change that displays to about 10 and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to increase the F scale up here to 50. And so now we can start to see these dots. So if I just solo that, you can see what's happening in there. 
The only other thing that I'm going to change as well is this disperse and twist. I'm going to really bump this up. So if I start bumping this up, you can see what is actually happening to all of those little dots. So now we have this cool kind of moving animation and when we add it to the rest of our uh, design, you can see what's actually happening there. And that looks pretty good. But now what we need to do is we need to kind of fill up the rest of this area. So what we can do is we can duplicate that again. And again, just for a bit of variation, we're just gonna change things up a little bit. So I'm just gonna go back and start in the base form and I'm just gonna lower some of these values down. So I'll set the particles in X to 20. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the particles in Y to 10 and I'll leave the particles in Z at one. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get this position button over here. I'm just gonna move it up just so that we have some particles just up there. So it creates a kind of uniqueness over there as well. So we're just gonna change a few things as well over here. So we're gonna go back to disperse and twist. And what I'm gonna do is I'm really gonna bump that up so I'm putting them everywhere really so now we have you know a lot more of these particles just floating everywhere on our composition and I think that looks pretty cool and I'm also going to go into the fractal settings and I'm just going to change the effect size to two and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lower that displace just a bit so don't want them to be that everywhere and yeah if you want to play around with any of these settings you know feel free so maybe if you want to lower that disperse up to you but i'm going to keep it maybe somewhere around 500 600 something like that so now i've got this you know stuff moving down here i've got this stuff moving over there so now all we have to do is pretty much do our camera um, animation over here. So what we can do with this is I'm just going to open up my camera settings and go into the transform settings. I'm just going to hit the stopwatch for position. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press C on my keyboard to bring up this icon over here. So this is all around. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm on the first keyframe here and I'm just going to maybe twist it a bit, something like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to the end of that composition and then I'm just going to rotate it again and make sure you get that kind of underwater like looking shot. And so now if I preview that, now you've got this camera animation that goes through this kind of fractal field and I think that's looking pretty nice. So now all we have to do is just dress it up. So what we can do now is we can highlight all of those uh, layers, go to layer and then go to pre-compose and we'll just call that final. And now what we need to do is we need to add a background. So I'm just gonna add a new solid layer. I'm just gonna call it BG, place it underneath the dots. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for an effect called gradient ramp. And I'm gonna put that in on there. And then I just need to change the colors. So I'm just going to color hunt and I'm gonna be using this color scheme over here. So if you want it to be a little bit more green, you can, but I'm gonna choose this really dark gray kind of color. And I'm just gonna paste it back in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna swap those colors and change it to a radial uh, ramp. And then I'm just gonna zoom out a bit and I'm just gonna move this black point just down there. And I'm just gonna play around with the settings until I get it how I like. And I think that's looking pretty cool. If you want more black, you can always move this. So that's looking pretty nice. Now we just need to get some color on there. So what I can do is I can search for an effect called fill. And if I just go back to color hunt and choose my color scheme, like a lighter color, maybe this one will be too light, but I'll go for something a bit more prominent. And I'm just gonna paste that back into here. So now I've got this cool, nice looking green, you know, um, kind of effect. And I think that's looking pretty nice. The other thing that we can add in here is maybe we can add some curves to this. 
And with the curves, I just wanna create a very small S bend. So you can see what happens here. When you go too far, then it just creates, you know, too much brightness and stuff over there. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna bring this down and have like a slight S bend like that. And the other thing that we can do is add some glow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add an effect uh, called glow. And I'm just gonna play around with some of these settings. So I'm just gonna bring maybe up the glow radius to something like 60. And I'm also gonna increase the glow intensity to about 1.5. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate that. So I'm gonna press Command D to duplicate it. And so now you can see that now we have that glow really kind of popping out. But this time what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to lower the glow radius. So I'm gonna bring it down to about say 30. And I'm also gonna lower the intensity to let's say 0.6. So it doesn't feel that intense. And so now we've got that cool glow that is going with the entire composition. And that's looking really cool. The last thing that we can do here is we can add another new adjustment layer. And if we search for the effect called noise, we can add some noise on this. So maybe if we put around about 8% of noise, now we have like a grainy texture that goes with it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So that has now created that same animation using the same techniques that we've uh, learnt in here. And yeah, if you wanna go back into anything else and you wanna change anything else up, you can always go back into your pre-comp and then just change uh, things in that form uh, settings over there. So anyways, guys, that was a quick tutorial on how to create an abstract background animation using Adobe After Effects and Trap Code form. I hope you guys learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.